Welcome and thank you for coming. I'd like to introduce to you guys for a few minutes my MFA thesis exhibition, Potent Materials. Potent Materials is an investigation into the power and status assigned with gender, or associated with gender that is assigned through marriage. As a newly married woman, I have created this series to examine what is at stake by being included in an American marriage, which I consider to be a system that is both historically as well as currently patriarchal. Also, considering that marriage at this time in America is exclusive, meaning that some partnerships are allowed while others are denied access to the privileges and rights prescribed through marriage, I consider the topic of marriage to be a relevant issue because it is an unanswered question in America today. I employ the historic visual identification system of heraldry, which you see in a variety of shield shapes in each of the objects in this series. I use heraldry as a device to reference male systems of power. Although the use of heraldry reached its height of popularity in the 16th century, we see the symbolic use of heraldry today in both the power of the state and the record of the family. Think about the official crest of the state government, or the university, or even a doctor's or lawyer's office. Or even to bring it to a more everyday object, road signs like Interstate 94 are presented on a sign in the shape of a heraldic shield, which symbolizes the power and order from the state. And of course, we also see the heraldic shield on, the family, on family crests in the record of the family through the family tree. In using this historic system to comment on current issues, I am attempting to remind the viewer that systems of male power are still active. By utilizing the formats of the trophy and the family tree, I attempt to employ the power of these objects, which I consider to be objects of masculine power in order to discuss issues that marriage raise, like representation, identity, gender roles, status, lineage, production, and reproduction. My material choices and technical processes are also specific to gender. I employ industrial grade steel rods and saw blades, which I heat until red hot, and through the muscular process of forging, or bending and hammering steel while it's red hot, I render the material soft, curvy, and lace-like, attempting to subvert their traditional masculine gender associations. Fleshy stockings, handmade lace, and quilted women's dress shirts, children's clothing, aprons, and dollies are used in these objects to reference the feminine identity. The placement and rendering of these fibrous materials are stretched, <coughs> knotted, stitched, tatted, and hardened, and are intended to interfere with the successful representation of systems of power and status. The body also plays a central role in this series. The human body in American culture is the object of personal and social identity, as well as the site where identity is constructed and defined. The objects included in potent materials are intended to engage the body by provoking sensory engagement through tactility, suggesting gendered anatomy, and inviting the viewer to vis physically move their body through space through installation strategies. The body in American culture is the site of declaring status, inclusion or exclusion, sexuality and desire, but also defines placement within structures of power. My goal with this work is to provoke discourse and, re and reveal male systems of power that have historically and continue to record the masculine identity and eliminate the female presence. Thank you, and I'll open the floor up to questions. I was just curious what the reactions play on the work. Sure, so the question is how does the display of the work inform the subject matter of the work? Um, so we'll just start with this one specifically because this is one of my favorites. Um, but um, in this piece, I cut a large oval hole out of the wall. Um, and my goal with this was, you know, I have a very specific message that I'm trying to get across, you know, through my research that I've done while I've been here. However, you know, I understand that 
you know, people may not know that coming right into it. So I'm trying to reach people um, in, through language that they already understand. And in this specific piece, it was through objects, because I make objects so the language of objects is really relevant. So I'm trying to think about the oval and what it means. So what are objects that are in the oval shape, right? So ob objects like portraiture. There's quite a few portrait frames that are oval. Um, the full-length vanity mirror is also oval. So I think that one was the one I was trying to reference specifically, but also cameos are in the same shape. And so trying to draw attention to the fact that even simple shapes in our culture mean something. Even though we may not necessarily look at a mirror and say, oh, that represents vanity, we understand it to be through systems like heraldry that have created that shape in the past. That is a good question. The question is, um, because I'm playing with gender, um, you know, are there some objects that are more masculine and some that are more feminine? Um, I think in all of the objects that I have here, I am trying to represent a little bit of both. Um, there are certainly some that take on um, that gendered anatomy that I was talking about, that representation. Um, and so I actually really enjoy that they could be either. You know, this object here, it has this long drooping form here, you know, which could be received as a flaccid penis or it could also be received as a sagging breast. You know, I think my specific intention is for it to be, you know, a sagging breast, but I actually really enjoy for people um, to be able to take it as they might take it. Sarah, can you talk more specifically about how the representations of gender, both male and female perspective, work in that piece mm -hmm. in terms of the symbolism that you have in the materials of the piece? Mm -hmm. So the question is, how am I working with the gender through the symbolism of this piece? So the object that I'm referencing in this piece is the animal head mounted trophy, which I consider to be a masculine object of power. And I've used steel, and actually um, hot forged steel, which is a very muscular process, in order to render this um, thicker black part that's connected to the wall. Um, however, I've rendered it in layers, so the layers are really soft and curvy. Um, so for me, the fact that they're soft and curvy gives them a feminine quality, and the fact that they are in layers gives them a feminine quality um, because of the gendered anatomy that it suggests. Um, and then, you know, as well with this, this drooping form. Um, what about the stocking? There's an interesting use of that material. Mm -hmm. Well, the stocking in the piece is, I would consider, a material that has a feminine um, gender or a feminine association it, through its history in lingerie and, and fetish. Um, and to, so to apply that, really for me, it's about having a feminine intervention. So there's this feminine material that's working um, to hold this object, but it has this feminine quality. Um, so it's intervening, hopefully, with the power of the, the trophy that it's in. Give Gania. I have a follow-up to that. Could you talk a little bit more about the material and the process discovery to me while making this body work and how they get into the content? So in my practice, samples are really important. And so before I work with objects, I take quite a bit of time to make smaller, quick samples of the fiber and the metal interacting with each other. Um, it's very fun for me, but it's also really informs the practice. And it's so quick that it, in a way it functions as drawing because I'm un able to understand on a small scale how the materials relate to each other. Um, and through that I was able, and I don't know if you've had an opportunity to look at the piece closely, but through that I was able to discover how closely the relationship of line is.
distance between the steel wire and the stocking. I was able to stretch the stocking and, and actually puncture it in order to create a run in the stocking, which inversely related to the, because it was transparent, inversely related to the opaqueness of the um, steel wire that it was connected to. And I was actually able to stitch it uh, into the steel line. So for this piece specifically, through my material interaction, I was able to discover that line is the commonality between these two materials. One of the biggest struggles for me in looking at this is what looks like an intentional putting together the materials that don't go together so they are overtly wrong on some level. And I'm curious about that strategy relative to the gender idea. Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so the question is how just the materials relationship in relationship to the subject matter of the work, um, which for me is is kind of the, the cherry of the work for me because they are really dissimilar materials. You've got soft fiber and hard steel, and the ability to um, you know make them closely relate for me is about defying our expectations of those materials. You know, I'm talking about a power struggle. So if my content is about this power struggle between gender in our society today, for me it made sense to make those materials also have a power struggle. And what I consider successful is at times when the feminine material overpowers the more masculine material that I'm using. So I, I love the, uh, when you're talking about your process and using these very um, uh, masculine processes to create these very feminine, lacy images to sort of forge something into um, into a feminine form, and um, that made me think about whether you know throughout history how oftentimes these these powerful men were actually supported by or or um, their power often came from the relationship. They had to live, and I'm wondering if historically you were able to do research that helped inform some of that aspect of the work. Um, well, I think I've been really lucky to uh, be going in, to a school and interacting with other graduate students that are doing similar research. So I am aware of some of the history behind um, successful men in history that have had women by their sides the entire time. It hasn't really been a focus specifically of my research. Um, but it's just one of those things that continues to re-inform um, the fact that this is, that history even is also really important when we look at contemporary issues. I was just wondering, um, you're you saying that they materials have gender associations and in your research, how do you feel about the, or like the association of metal How do you feel about that and do you feel at all like by making something like this and pointing at it and saying this is a masculine process, this is a masculine material or feminine material, do you feel like you're reinforcing that or do you, what do you think about that? So the question is identifying materials as either masculine and feminine, uh, do I feel like I'm reinforcing that or am I doing something about it? Um, and I think through some of the investigations that I've done where I've tried to say this is no longer a masculine material, it is a feminine material, I've realized that it's more important or it's more successful to acknowledge how people come to material and then try and work from there instead of just flat out saying it's not like that, you know? <laughs> because I would like to acknowledge several things that have happened in history that shouldn't be the way they are, but they are, you know. Um, I think a lot of it also, for me, goes back to this issue of, of, of craft, you know. Like, there's all of these, um, I'm trying to say, I mean, I just think that it's, it's being, there's, we're at this moment right now where uh, some of those ideas are really being shifted. So um, I'd like to think that this is playing into that as well. <laughs> um, I'm curious, fiber for steel. 
use of the material because I see it as being very different from each piece. You're sort of saying you know, the material is all doing one thing and the metal is all doing something else. Mm -hmm. But I'd like you to kind of address the issues that you I mean, for me, the stockings represent skin. Mm -hmm. So you kind of use the word skin very much. So that relationship almost becomes like a torture thing. You've got skin, you've got their metal hanging off of it. Whereas the lace to me is more like decoration. Sure, yeah. And then the fabric is something totally different for me. That yeah. can read as upholstery, it can read as a garment, it can be read, but it, it has a very different quality, the ones that are using the fabric, than the ones that are using either the stockings or the lace. Mm -hmm. um, can you address that? And, and talk yeah, about sure. this piece a little too, because I think this is a really strange little piece here okay. that we haven't talked about. I would say, I would agree. For me, the stocking, even though it does reference sexual fetish, for me, it is about flesh. It's very much about flesh. Um, and so, I would agree with that, absolutely. Um, the lace, you mentioned lace collars, and, and for me, because I, so much of my practice is informed by history, the lace is very much about status, right? So, the status of who made the lace versus who was, you know, allowed to wear the lace you know, because of sanctuary laws. Um, the, the, the fabric, for me, is I reference quilting with fabric. So I'm referencing um, African-American history. I'm referencing the visual coded system of, of quilting and um, some of those patterns, what they reference. But also um, femininity, right, because quilting circles. And this was one of the few times that women were allowed to gather without the presence of men. So the, also the transference of stories. And for me, that also really references the tradition of craft, which is an oral tradition that's passed on. Um, and then this piece here, the, the nebule sag, <laughs> um, this one is also for me about uh, masculinity and about status because of the ornamentation, the specific shape uh, references, the rules of heraldry. Uh, I chose steel because of its structural properties initially when I started using when I, using it for the series. And um, the way that the steel is connected, so the structural integrity of that piece is actually not held together by the steel, it's held together by the stocking, which I consider the, um, the feminine material in there. So not only is the feminine uh, in that piece becoming an intervention, but it has also um, define that piece. It's the reason that that piece exists um, and creates the, the shape that it does. So the shaping of that one is also really great because it's not something that I decided I wanted to be that shape. I just I followed the rules of heraldry to uh, for that shaping of that line and then concentric circles and the shape of it was decided because of that rule that I set um, to follow the you know heraldry. Hung at that crotch height. Mm -hmm. So it could be yeah, so male it's, or male, depending on whether you saw it as a female shape or whether you saw it as sort of a cod piece, mm -hmm. male protective. Shape. Yeah, I, I would say installation is, plays a really important role in this body of work, but in my work, because I'm making objects. And the way that people interact with these objects is informs the work as well. You know, for example, I have a white wall over here with nothing on it, you know, and for me that was a really specific choice so that people would have to move around this because our main door is here and when they come, they actually come to the back of the piece. So in order to, you know, to get the, the good shot, they have to come around and uh, because of the orientation of the walls, I figured, you know, that's the way that they have to come around it. So. A lot of that is playing with how people move through space and how I want them to move through space um, and to get them to move through space, you know, whether it happens or not. Hopefully it does. Thank you, Sarah.